Hello everybody, I'm Dan. In this video I'm going to show you how to install GCC, which is a command line compiler for both C and C++. The primary goal of my tutorial series here is to teach people GPU parallel programming, but if you're learning C for another purpose, that's all good. You'll be able to be an expert by the time I'm done with the little C tutorial series there. So we're going to open up my web browser to my website, thegpu.com and uh, we'll scroll down here to C tutorials. Now you can also access it through menu and C tutorials here as well. And so we'll select installing a C compiler. Now chances are that if you're interested in learning C then you already are proficient in another programming language. If you have never programmed before then I can tell you that C is not the best option for a beginner to tackle. C is considered to be a mid-level programming language. It's just a step above assembly language. While there are many IDEs out there that will allow you to compile and run C code, it is best to learn C using a terminal, command, and a simple text editor. Learning C this way will instill a greater understanding of the language and you will be able to write, compile, and run C programs on a variety of different operating systems. Now in this tutorial I will show you how to install and configure GCC. GCC is one of the most popular command line C compilers. GCC comes pre-installed on most Linux operating systems and on uh, OS X, Apple, right? GCC is installed if you install Xcode. And I won't be going over that today here. I'm pretty much just gonna be doing the GCC for Windows, but if you're on Apple, just install Xcode and you'll get GCC for the running from straight out of the terminal. Now, when it comes to Windows, the easiest way to get GCC up and running is to download the installer from mingw.org. It's important to note that simply downloading and installing GCC will not get you up and running properly. After the installation is complete, we need to set some environment variables in order for GCC to function as expected. I will show you how to set up the environment of variables in Windows 10 and in previous versions of Windows. So let's go ahead and get started here. Let's just click on the mingw.org link here. And they've got the download installer button over here. They also have like some links over here, but either way, it'll take us out here to SourceForge and it'll just go ahead and start downloading here. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, we'll go ahead and select save the file here. Of course, I'm running Fo Firefox, so it puts it up here. If you're running Chrome, it'll probably be down there. It's uh, neither here nor there. All right, let's go ahead and we'll just close out of that link there, minimize this. So here is the, uh, the installation setup tool here. And we're just gonna go ahead and click on install. We'll leave these boxes checked here. And one of the things I I want to really emphasize is do not change this directory right here. It's going to install it right off your C, right off the root in the C drive in a folder called mingw. Don't change that to program files. Program files has a space in it and uh, GCC does not work all that great with directories that have spaces in them. Just so you know. So we'll just select continue with all the default stuff there. And it'll go out and grab some stuff here from SourceForge and install it here. And it's basically installing the installation manager tool here at this first step here. And once we've got the installation manager tool, then we can go ahead and select uh, basically to install some, some of the basic setup stuff. Plus the, in this tutorial, we'll also install the uh, G++ compiler, which is the, the C++ compiler as well. So... Here is the installation package manager. Now what we want to do is we want to select this one here, a basic MinGW uh, min installation. We want to select that one, mark for installation. And we're also going to select the GNU C++ compiler. We're not going to be using C++ right at the moment there, but uh, later on down the road we will. So let's go ahead and mark that. And then we just come up to installation from the menu option and we select apply changes. And you can see there's going to be upgraded packages will be installed. We'll just go ahead and select apply on that. <coughs> Meanwhile, I'll just put a shortcut on my desktop that I'm just going to drag off window here and keep my desktop nice and clean for the video. And so this will run through a whole bunch of different stuff here. Now, um, in the meantime, I'm going to gra drag my command prompt window or shortcut over here and um, you could create one really fast by right clicking and selecting new shortcut CMD next and finish it's just that easy um, when we open this up here's our command window if you're not familiar with Windows that's how you open it up CMD all right and we'll just go ahead and bring that down here and this is almost done here the close button will become 
enabled when it's all finished here. Okay, now we're ready, now we're done. Okay, we can close out of that and close out of this. Now on the, uh, on the command window here, if I just type in uh, GCC, right, we're gonna get its, GCC is not recognized as an internal or external command, the op operable programmer batch file, and that's because it doesn't know where GCC is. And uh, it doesn't know where GCC is because G the path to G GCC is not located in the Windows system environment variables. So if we do CD, which is short for change directory, right, and then backslash, which will tell it to go to the root. And now if we do a directory, um, I just start typing in min and then um, min GW, right? <clears throat> and uh, basically, dir is, uh, let me do another directory command here, right? min star dot, right? Which will be like, you can see here's the min gw and it's right off of the root of the directory of the C here. So we're gonna do a CD, which is change directories, right? And we're gonna change directories to this min gw folder here. Now inside of this min gw folder here, we've got, um, you know, basically uh, some subfolders in there as well. Now, if you're used to using um, Explorer and whatnot there, you can see you got your local disk, <coughs> MinGW, so on and so forth there. Um, we're gonna be working out of the command prompt here, and so we aren't gonna be using the, G the GUI, the graphical user interface that Explorer provides us there. So inside of the bin folder is a bunch of files there, but specifically we're looking for gcc.exe, right? And gcc.exe is the compiler there. Now, if I type in GCC in this folder, I get this message here, GCC fatal error, no input files, compilation terminated. It's exactly what we're looking for. If I, for example, change directories to the root and I type in GCC, right, I'm gonna get this not recognized as an internal command operable or program or bash file. So with the way it's configured right now, it'd be very difficult to actually compile a file from a different folder. So that's what we wanna fix here. So let's go ahead and close out of the command prompt here. With Windows 10, we'll just come down here in the search windows and we'll just start typing in environment variables and we get edit the system environment variables. And this, this little button right here that pops up, you got environment variables, okay? There's two sections. There's an upper one and a lower one here. We're interested in the system variables, not the user variables, it's the system variables, and specifically this path right here. So highlight path, select edit, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here and we are going to do a new one. Now, uh, we'll just type in ASDF and hit enter, right? Um, that just gives it kind of a placeholder. And now we're gonna browse, because we're on that placeholder there. And we're going to this PC, the local disk, um, min GW, and bin, which is the location of, remember where that uh, gcc.exe was? We're selecting that right there. So that. That one we click OK and OK and close out of this. And we wrote, reopen our command prompt now. Now we type in GCC and you can see we don't get that other message saying it can't find it. We get our fatal error, no input files, compilation terminated, which is exactly what we're looking for. No matter which file or folder we change to now, we can always type in GCC. And we're actually kind of getting ready to, ready to uh, uh, compile some stuff now, but it's basically telling us we have a fatal error because normally we'd pass the name of our file name, our source code file name. So that configures it for Windows 10. So let's pop over to another, my, uh, I'm gonna just remote into a Windows 8 machine here, right? So I've installed GCC on here, but I have not. <clears throat> let's go ahead and open this up here. I haven't, uh, I haven't configured the system variables here on Windows 8. And what I'm about to show you apply to Windows 8 uh, 8.1, 7 as well. And for that matter, I think even like if you go back to XP, but uh, if you're running XP, then you really need to upgrade anyway. So um, let's right click on our this PC and you can either do it from, I got a shortcut on my desktop or from right here, right? And what you can do is go to properties, okay? Which brings up this and you'll see advanced system settings right here. Click advanced system settings, environmental variables, Scroll down here to path, right? And then you'll select edit. Now this is much different than Windows 10 because we've got a whole bunch of different things all separated by semicolons in here. So what you wanna do is you wanna to go to the very end, you wanna put a semicolon, right? Then you wanna put in C colon backslash min GW backslash bin backslash, okay? So once again, 
you got a semicolon because we're separating all of our, our little paths there. We're C colon backslash min GW backslash bin. We'll click OK on that. OK there, OK there, close out of this. Now if we open back up a command prompt here, <coughs> type in GCC, now we get what we're looking for, fatal error, no input files. So now that's properly configured in Windows. So that's how you do that in Windows 8.1 and 7 and previous there. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and close out of that, and I'm going to pop over here into my Mac, and um, so this has Xcode on it installed already, right? And so if we open up Terminal right here, uh, we can type in GCC, right? And look, we get the no input files there. So you can see GCC, we can also compile stuff here on our Mac right out of Terminal. Good to go on that. I just wanted to demonstrate that to you there. I'll get that off one, off of there. And I'm going to open up one more here. And I've got uh, my Raspberry Pi remoted into that one here. And I can open up Terminal here too and type in GCC. And I get the exact same message there. Fatal error, no input files, compilation terminated. So as you can see, GCC we can compile across a variety of different app, um, platforms there. So anyway, that will pretty much uh, do it for this tutorial. Stay tuned for my next tutorial where I will uh, show you how to write just basic, a simple little C program that displays uh, stuff to the console there. Thanks for watching.